Hi everybody, I'm Dr Tamara Cumming, a senior lecturer at Charles Sturt University in Bathurst, Australia. Today I'm presenting um, a presentation on hearing early, child, early childhood educators' voices about their well-being. I wanted to clarify that in Australia, we use the inclusive term educators to mean those who may have a degree, a diploma or a certificate in early childhood education, uh, rather than um, specifying each time what the qualification is. So to, to begin at the beginning, um, educators' well-being, why does it matter? Well, research shows that when educators are well, they can provide stable, stimulating, supportive, effective learning environments for children. The aim of the project that underpins um, the findings that I'm presenting today is called the Early Childhood Educators Wellbeing Project, project which we call EQUIP. And we take a holistic approach to looking at the psychological and physiological aspects of educators' well-being within the context of their work environment and the broader socio-cultural political context. This is our team. Um, that's me second from the left, Tamara Cumming, and I have my colleagues um, in the order listed there. We're from Charles Sturt University, Macquarie University and Griffith University in Australia. And we're a multidisciplinary team, um, including psychologists, um, early childhood education people, exercise scientists and um, paramedics. In our project overall, we measure um, these areas of well-being and listed next to them are the tools and measures that we use. Today, what I'm reporting on are some qualitative findings that come from the psychological area of well-being. Where I've got the arrow pointing, um, we looked at understandings of um, educators' well-being educators' understandings of their well-being and what the supports and challenges are for that well-being. So before I share the findings, I wanted to just briefly consider, well, why does it matter to hear educators' voices? If we're measuring um, people's blood pressure and take using self-report psychometric um, um, approaches to understanding well-being, why, why do we need to hear what educators think about well-being? Well, it's, it's, a number of, for, it's important for a number of reasons and taking a holistic approach means we need to consider um, ethically how we are positioning educators as research subjects and one way um, that we're attempting to balance that up a bit is to um, show the respect to hear what they think. Um, it, it well-being means and what helps them or makes it more difficult. Other researchers have also noted that um, research tends to focus on what's wrong, on, on ill health, and that makes it hard to understand how we can get better well-being. Um, there's also the important matter that educators can feel very undervalued um, at a social level and by failing to seek their perspectives and just treating them like objects of research, it may further um, um, embed that, that sense of not being valued. Um, Hall Kenyon also point out that it's important to understand the complexity and the interconnected reasons behind the numbers so we get a more holistic view of how these things work together. And of course, gaining these understandings may help um, in targeting improvements to systemic conditions because we're thinking about, well, this is what the numbers say, but this is what the educators say as well. And we need to attend to what matters to them because perhaps that's going to be the area of greatest change. So our question to the educators um, as part of the um, psychological survey was how do you understand early childhood educators wellbeing? So first of all, um, they, in terms of what, what is wellbeing, how do they understand it? Um, they understood that it's um, mental, emotional, physical health and happiness. It's a sense, and it's also a sense of feeling safe. Um, interestingly, in the um, breakout there, I've got an oxymoron, which is literally what somebody wrote. So clearly, clearly there's at least one participant um, feeling like wellbeing is just not something that's um, accessible to educators. So educators also understood well-being as an individual responsibility, um, focusing on health and, and taking action on that, caring for the whole self and um, acting on health, looking at yourself holistically. And interestingly, this bottom response, being able to take on feedback and improve and adapt to meet the needs of all stakeholders, which I find a very, you know, makes me a bit sad really, because I feel like that's a very instrumental approach to yourself and um, the self as, um, you know, hu human capital in the, ma the machine of um, services. 
Educators also understood though that their well-being is a shared responsibility, that it's not just about them making sure that they're well. It's a sense that they, um, they should be looked after as well as the children they care for. They need support. Um, they would like better work, work balance and conditions that are fair to all, regardless of qualifications. Um, recognition of the effort involved in the work, being treated well, um, supportive working environments and um, environments that help them thrive. And again, this last one is a, is a bit sad, that sense that someone should feel they need permission to take time off when they're terribly sick is a bit of an indictment on um, failure to, um, to really be granting people's basic rights as workers. People also felt that well-being was connected to their job satisfaction. So they recognised that um, their work gives them a holistic sense of well-being. Perhaps that's in relation to their personal life. You know, they, they have this sense of, oh, um, what I do at work is contributes to my all-over sense of well-being. Um, I feel happy to come to work, being passionate and being satisfied with yourself and your work. So some quite interesting responses there. Educators also recognise that well-being has effects on their practice quality and on their personal life. And these things obviously can go both ways. Um, so, and particularly if the work environment is poor, that can, that can lead to poor well-being that affects personal life as well. So basically the idea that well-being, um, the, the quality of their well-being will affect how well they can do their job. Um, and if they have, um, you know, their well-being is working well, they'll be able to do their jobs well and without feeling under so much pressure. Um, and someone noticing that they, they've noticed that if they're not feeling well, whether that's um, physiologically or mentally, then they find, they find their work more difficult. Um, an interesting idea that it's important to look after yourself before you look after the children because you can't pour for an em from an empty cup. And also that you need to keep in mind um, the, to balance between your personal and professional goals and to keep that in mind when you're at work. So not just when you go home, but when you're at work, that there is still this personal life that you have a right to and um, that your work shouldn't necessarily uh, completely take that over. And I've included this quote at the end. Um, I, I thought it was very telling um, because it brings together all of the, the sorts of things that we're concerned with to do with educators' wellbeing, the effects on children, the effects on um, a service from a business point of view, or you know, regardless how, how, how it's um, owned, it's very costly to services when educators aren't well. It has flow on effects to children and families. And of course, um, it can have flow on effects to accidents at work, um, low staff morale. It, there are so many things that poor wellbeing um, uh, has impacts upon and, and so it was really um, great to see somebody recognising how all of those things are brought together. So I think this quote really shows why it's worth asking, um, why it's worth giving educators the time to tell us how they see all of these things connected together and they're clearly a sophisticated understanding. So bringing that all together, um, the participants' responses showed quite a holistic strengths-based understanding of wellbeing and its effects on practice quality. So, so when well-being is challenged, the effects on practice quality, and and that when well-being is in a good state, the positive effects on practice quality. There were clear understandings of the balance between the individual and the shared responsibilities for well-being. So, thinking back to the model um, at the beginning of the presentation, that the ecological model, a sense that it's not just about the individuals making sure that they're well and it doesn't matter what the work environment or anyone else does or thinks um, but rather that the um, that well-being goes beyond individual responsibility at the same time there were also quotes that gave the sense that um, people understood they were entitled to work environments that enabled them to provide high quality care so a rights approach but also others um, who's who's Responses showed the idea that they saw their well-being as a bit conditional. That it was it was mostly important because if they were well, then they could do uh, you know they could benefit others. And and so sacrificial discourse is coming in a bit there. So it was it was um, really good to see evidence 
um, of educators having having that entitlement that they deserve to be treated well, that they deserve to be considered equally alongside children, and that they um, they felt there should be fairer conditions that weren't necessarily just tied to qualification. So what does all of that tell us? It, it, it certainly tells me that work environment uh, has a very important role in well-being, that, um, that work conditions, um, the culture and services between the people who work there, and educators' sense of self in relation to the work, what, what they should give, uh, what they should be entitled to receive. And so to me, there's some of the areas in which further work could be done to better support educators' wellbeing. If you're interested um, in finding out more about our work, we have a number of um, academic publications, but we've also um, translated our findings you know, in a number of these sources. We have a Facebook page, which we'd love you to follow, um, and um, you'll be able to find out about our academic publications there as well. So thanks very much for your time. I hope you've found today's um, presentation useful and interesting. <laughs>